Yeah. This is what we get to play with now. It stopped. I don't have a beating device. They're locked in my truck and my toolbox is closed. There's rocks. What the hell happened to your jacket? Oh, well, you'll have that on those big operations. <laughs> I mean, it's partially there. It's okay, the heater still works in it. That's all that matters. Yeah, it just doesn't start sometimes. No, I was talking about my coat. Oh. <laughs> thought we were talking about the tractor. So what's wrong with this, other than the fact that the starter solenoid sticks sometimes? It doesn't crank over. Even when it works? Well, you got to get it to crank over, I bar the motor a few times, and then it'll catch every once in a while. And if you get to catch in a good enough amount of teeth, it'll spin it fast enough for it'll catch to the next set. Oh, they've they have thoroughly killed this one then. Maybe. we got to pull the starter off so we can see what the teeth look like on the flywheel. <coughs> This is fun though. Because if the teeth look fine, but it just needs a starter. It's just the Bendix in the starter. So it's either starter or flywheel. Is it bad that I'm hoping flywheel? Is it bad I'm hoping starter? I mean, it won't be bad if it is a flywheel. As long as we can get to the torque converter bolts easy enough, because it is an automatic. <clears throat> it's got a reverser in it. Are we going to have to flip the cab? The cab doesn't flip. It's no. definitely bolted straight down. No. Look at how small it is in here. Literally, your pumps and stuff hang right off the front. All we got to yeah. do is unbolt the bell housing after we get the torque converter unbolted. Slide it back far enough where we can get one of my, an impact and a torque wrench in there to zip it out and get the flywheel out. Which, it, we may even get lucky and it's got a removable ring gear. Which, we could just leave the flywheel on it and heat the ring gear up or cut it with a die grinder and pop the ring gear off and heat the new one up and press it right back on. Then we don't have to take the flywheel off. I'm pretty excited about this. I really hope it's got a removable ring gear like, a, like an old tractor. Because a lot of old tractors are that way, like a CA, Alice Chandler's B, that stuff. They've all got a removable ring gear that you can buy for them for the starter. I've split a few of those and replaced them. I mean, it's got an access hole right there. I can almost fit my head through there. I think we can fit all of little Tyler through there. Probably. He could crawl through there. There's a couple hydraulic pumps off of it. I really don't see it being too awful bad. I mean, yeah, it, it's gonna suck, regardless. <clears throat> the doors don't work like they should. So this one's stuck shut and the other one's stuck open? They're both stuck shut, because this one's welded. Like, see the handle, the thing? It's oh. Welded. Well, the other side, the latch mechanism don't work and it's fucking latched. <laughs> I'd take a screwdriver and get the other side to open it off the trailer. After having to borrow it over and find that sweet spot to start it? Yeah, it took 30 minutes with it on the trailer, man, a pry bar and having somebody in it, cranking on it, cranking on it, cranking on it. That doesn't sound fun. Yeah. The Matco truck's going to be back there for me to build that harness for. Well, that's good. After we get the new control module. So, uh, is this actually going to fit in the shop between the lift? Is it narrow enough? There's only one way to find out. Knock the lift over? No. We'll pull it in there and see if it's going to fit. Size it up. If it fits, it fits. If it don't, it don't. I was just going to take the starter out with it out here while he's working on that RV. That works. By the time I jack with trying to get it started in the cold out here anyways, I can have the starter off of it. Seriously, it takes like 30 minutes to find the sweet spot. I was going to say, my truck is right there with my toolbox. Let me just pull up sideways and we'll get that starter ripped out. Yeah. I'll All climb right. up there so I can unhook the batteries. Chris is getting the batteries disconnected. Grab my SE semi deep set down there. Grab a ratchet. So, just looking at some of the wiring here, and this thing has gotten crispy. That one doesn't look too terrible down there. This one's been burnt all to hell. That heat shrink's been pretty hot. This wire looks like it's been hot. That's like three or four wires that have melted together into a bundle. They're just one wire now. I don't know what they're feeding.
Chris got tired of not having his impact, so he went and moved his truck closer. I'm still questioning why you're taking the bottom bolt out last. Yeah. Sounded fun. You gotta have some excitement in your line. Yeah, he only had two of the three starter bolts in. Well, maybe if it had all the bolts in it, I would have started with the bottom, Tyler. I'm just saying, I always usually start with the one that ends up with a crushed hand. Well, once I get the bolt started, I'll move my hand out of the way. But I'm hoping this will help catch it, too. If I could get the dang thing on there. A whole lot better now. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Just want to make sure that uh, this is more convenient for you. No, you just want to see me get hit in the head with the starter and get it on film. I know exactly what you're up to. I am recording. All right, I got the starter's tail. This thing looks super heavy, I'm just saying. Yeah, just from stopping it from falling, it's it's not light. Alright. Fish. Can you pull the wires all out of the way? Yeah, I'm working on it. Okay, go back. We're catching on some a wire right here. That little wire. Oh. It, okay. You know what? I see a lot of metal shavings just hanging right now. Uh, let me through here, please. Oh, you want to crawl out? Yeah. Cause I tell you what, instead of pulling that starter all the way out, if we gotta split this thing, we're gonna stick that starter back in it and we're gonna put it in the shop because I ain't jacking with it out here in the cold. All right. Well, I'd say if you want to go grab your inspection camera, we can probably uh, find inspection out right now. Camera? We can probably just look through the hole with the light. Oh, that's going to be fancier. If we bought the tool, we might as well use it. Yeah, but then i got to go in there and get it. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Well. Trying to figure out a way to get oh, some light in here. So you can see, uh, the teeth are worn clean off of it. So, this thing's going to have to get split and get a ring gear put in it. Wasn't very likely that it was just a starter that was bad in it, but you can always hope. So I think we're going to just stab the starter back in here enough that we can start this thing and get it in the shop. So we got the starter put back on it. We're going to try to get it pulled in the shop. When it comes time to split it and get the flywheel put in, we're going to hope it fits. If not, we'll just have to do it outside. But I'm not sure that I'm going to be in town when this thing gets done because I have to go back to Texas. So if you guys want to follow the repairs on this tractor, make sure you check out Chris over at Carter's Garage. I'll have a link to his channel in the description box on this video if you want to check him out.